ready? Let's do it. All right. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Multnomah County School District, Wednesday, March 9, 2022, 5.30 p.m. School Board meeting. The mission of the Multnomah Community School District is to provide an education that encourages continual progress through the improvement of one's abilities, the expansion of one's interests and knowledge, and the growth of one's character. Call to order. Roll we'll call, please, Joy. Tim Garrett. All right, we will agenda approval. Is there any additions, changes, or corrections, Mr. Burnett? Well, the only thing I want to point out is follow the one that's handed out tonight because the one that was oh, the one that's no. online has been updated since this morning. Oh, okay. oh, well, mine isn't. So it's just maybe, maybe it's just I need you. To, I need refresh. Maybe it's for me. No. So anyway, it's not. just make, hold on. <laughs> I could use that. But no. all I'm saying is, is please good? use the handout for your agenda. Um, but that's not anything changing. I just want to make sure. That is true. Yeah. Now it is. I had to refresh. Okay. I did my After account. refreshing, okay. it should show up if you have not. All right. Continue, please. All righty. Thank you. All right. So there's no. no. We're okay. So. Thank you. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. We will do all of the minutes in one motion: the February 9th regular, the February 23rd special meeting, and the February 23rd work session, please. Motion carries. All right, public forum. Well, yes, we've got Joe Hewlett and Tammy Place here to go over their um, interest from the WEA. And I've given them a copy of our interest um, as a district. I guess at this time, are there any questions between both parties from the board and or the WEA? I know we are scheduled to meet three weeks from tonight at 5 o'clock. Um, an exempt session here, and uh, yeah, just move forward and <coughs> go from there. But are there any questions that you have about our interests, or does the board have any interests, or whatnot? Everything should be said in terms of everything from the state, and um, what can we dig in? Is it just kind of a formality at this point? Absolutely, right. this isn't our first time. Right. 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 Have any medical updates? I go back tomorrow, so. Ask me tomorrow night. All right. I don't have a word. You're still on crutches, so can't I be good. See <laughs> <laughs> All right. So anyway, well, thank you, and I know we have friends from Chicago. Yes. Back to you, but so thank you. Little too crazy. Appreciate it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll let you introduce next. Kate and what right. she has. So next, we have Mrs. Kate Weekly. She's one of our Spanish teachers. She's also our ELO teacher. And currently doing her internship at Harvard. And she's here to talk about the interest of the All right. So, um, I got so much. So. I love that one. Okay, sweet. Okay. So, um, this is just the informational handout um, about a Spanish trip that we are thinking about for the summer of 2023. Um, so I've taken one trip with this company and one canceled trip with this. I was all ready to go in 2020. So now we're kind of off a year on my two year rotation. So current seniors got the sad news that they never got a Spanish trip because I just wasn't, wasn't ready and comfortable to do one this coming summer in the place. <coughs> So um, it seems like we have some general interest, enough to um, move forward and look into it. I just sent out a, a Google form and met with some parents that had questions just to see, like, is this even something that uh, Wilton students are interested in? Um, so it's through Experitas, which is a nonprofit educational travel company out of the Twin Cities. Um, so they're who I travel with as a student. They're Honestly, the only travel company I trust with kids. I, they're amazing. You get a community 
leader that takes you everywhere, speaks Spanish with the kids, and I tell the kids, like, it's not a vacation, it's so far from a vacation. <laughs> like, they do Spanish classes, they do dance classes, cooking classes, they live with a host family, that's what scares most kids away, um, but I, I, yeah, so I'm planning to open it up to kids who have finished Spanish 2, 3, and 4. In the past, I've only done 3 and 4, but just like with the number of kids that I've gotten in the past, I'm going to try opening one up to another grade level, just because in the past we had 5 kids, and for me to go without cost, it's 6 students. So like the last two trips, I just offset the cost a little bit myself because it's obviously it's fun for me to practice my Spanish too. Um, so yeah, that that is um, basically all of the information. Um, as Joy already knows, the only thing that's not 100% accurate on that sheet that you have is they put all of their like how to pay for the trip information on there, but Joy and I obviously do it separately. Like none of the kids don't pay. I don't know how they even do that because there's no way other schools are doing that either. Like we're not the only one who has them in the school. But anyway, so um, it's got all the costs and everything and the itinerary is just amazing. Um, it does just like Rick Begley's trip have a vaccine requirement. So I've been upfront with everybody about that and will continue to be just, I mean, I think it's the host family thing, right? They're going to be staying with the family they don't know. So mm -hmm. that's just the company's policy. So yeah, yeah. So that's I mean, great. we're so excited. Oh, me too. What an opportunity for the kids, and yes. thank you for yeah. giving them that opportunity. Mm -hmm. to I think we have one requirement, which we told Mr. Beckley too, is that you guys come back and share your experience. Yes, yes. for sure. Yes. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. I'll make the kids come. Yes. Yes. I yes. want to hear from <laughs> them. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah. Great. But you'll see this, uh, well, I'm asking for your approval and consent agenda number three tonight. Do so. you have any specific questions, Ms. Winkler? When, oh, when are you going? So summer 2023, we don't know the exact that. date. It's cheaper if we can combine with other schools who oh, are yeah. the same company. So my former Spanish teacher, last I knew her, kids were picking between Costa Rica and Puerto Rico, and we use the same company. So maybe Center Point or Banner we get to join with, make it cheaper for everybody. But I normally try to go June, so all the baseball, softball kids know, like, sorry. I have, like, one or two softball kids that are like, I'm going to be up front with my coaches and tell them a year and a half in advance <laughs> that I will be gone for 10 days. And I said, awesome. That's yeah. good. Yes, advocate for yourself. So um, I think I, there's no perfect. No, I just no, wonder. Yeah, I mean, but I it'll it'll be stuff. yep. Once no. we yep, probably okay. like a, when it gets closer to a oh, year yeah. out, we'll know. No giggles. So okay. Excellent. Well, good luck. Thank you. Where are you going? Thank you, sweetly. Thanks. Do you have to? I just. Oh, I can. Yeah, I'll bring one right now. Costa Rica. Anyway, all right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's move on then to Angela, please. Okay. Um, up number six is the taxation funds. There's no large changes either way. Um, I really don't feel like there's anything that we specifically need to look at there. I'm very comfortable with all of that. number seven is structural support levy program. I know there's Mrs. O'Donnell and Mrs. Austin have been asking about this. The junior senior building, they're sitting at just under $8,000 as their remaining budget amount and the elementary just under $6,000. Always. Up 
nutrition program. Uh, I'll just point out again the total balance went up again. Um, but next month you will definitely see a change. In the last two days we just got done ordering lots of new stuff for nutrition and for uh, Mrs. Dankman. So you will see a change next month there. I just want to point out in the student's activity fund, if you look at uh, your revenues versus your expenditures there, we had over 3000 in revenues. I just want to point that out, but that is because of the 8th graders taking their trip to, to Washington, D.C. We got a lot of money in, in for that. Otherwise, the enterprise funds look fine. We've got the vendor totals, <coughs> excuse me, for the student activity fund, and as well for the FFA. And then our activity the driving report for February and March. Um, we just finished up all of our fall sports. Um, we were winding down there, so our um, grand total is about half of what it was last month for that reason. And then upload 16, I believe it is for you. The, um, more bills. Um, and fun 10, I will just point out on page 4, we had an additional $15,000 expense because we paid for the Edgenuity, the online, for um, the kids that are doing that. So that was an additional, like I said, $15,000. On page 9, we had our fourth quarter equipment breakdown payment, so we took care of that. I believe our other... Um, <coughs> Allocation for the pool is included as well. So that was an additional 15000 um, I just want to bring your attention to Fund 33. We should be wrapping that up now. We paid for all the, the glass for the trophy cases, and we also paid Mr. Raggett for his constructing uh, those. So once those checks get sent out, we will go ahead and we will close that project. And we will officially be done with that. We've got all the bills taken care of. And um, point builders, that's also, uh, that's in there too. We are holding on to the last retainage uh, check until we got that, that water issue taken care of. So both Mr. Burnett and Mr. Copper gave you the case. And yes, okay. page 10, what's the frisbee golf and the frisbee golf? That is something that we um, had purchased and we hope to get it in before the beginning of school or, or right as school started, but we used um, the Towns Townsend's mm -hmm. um, donation to purchase that. So and it's going to be our frisbee golf course? Yeah.
then we um, dipped into our Pebble Fund a little bit, Fund 36. Um, we got the bus from Muscatine, and they went ahead and they did all the lettering and the labor involved with, with that. So it's nice to have that bus. That's very cool. Well, any questions on any of those things? Teacher conference does, does a very good to see how they're received as well as implemented because this is our first full scale leader in the portfolio sharing. So we're going to try to bring some kids in the park so we can share that with you as well. We'll just take three minutes. We're going to do pretty quickly. We'll watch it. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see how it goes. I think it's great. April 20th, our leader in the leadership day. Probably all received your invitations. Yeah, that's yeah. fine. The kids work hard, and we try to have kind of a mixture of highlighting what we do every day to making it something that's performance, you know, and actually is the most we can. So, yeah. Okay. With the leader me, the actually third thing I have listed there, that Lighthouse team process. The goal of every leader in these school is to reach Lighthouse status. And everybody feels comfortable going for that Lighthouse status um, at different points because the team comes in from leader and me and decides whether we're getting points on the leader to warrant Lighthouse status. So we are going to begin to head that direction by having a readiness check next Thursday. And then our MRA, which is our um, is, uh, our survey, it's our measurable results assessment. That it's a way to put all of this into a number in categories, and that's all of our work each year. Whatever we're loving with the parents and the students only fourth through sixth grade take it. All parents will be emailed in, and then the whole staff. So we'll be doing that in May. We hired Christine Fox as a pre. School associate, one more associate, so she's at it, picking up her back. And then spring starts the week after <laughs> spring break. Everybody's gone to about swimming this year. We haven't done it for two years. So our second graders have never been to the pool. And it is it is hard. It's it's Jake's rightfully so. So we're gonna try to get some extra help. It's, it's a great experience for them. Mm -hmm. Even if they just get in and get wet mm -hmm. in 15 minutes, it's, mm -hmm. it's good. You know, the walk over there is good. It's all it's good. But you need the extra help for talking to high school students? Yes. Yeah. That's what we're trying to get. We're trying so to get. I remember Carly did that. Yeah. We got that whole mm -hmm. mentoring thing couldn't happen. And I know. Yeah. And that's our problem because we've had two years on it. So these kids, the old type of class, don't even remember doing it. Yeah. So we did we walked to start training pool. Right. And our, but it was cool to go over there and help. Yeah. So we can't. It's hard. And our schedules right now aren't really good. When we need a lot of help is when they're at lunch. Uh, so we're right. kind of at a, I got to come though with you. Great. They don't, they don't, they don't eat lunch. So no. they don't oh, they don't Keep them busy. Yeah. And it's good for both sets. Okay. Oh, yes. yes. And really, you just need a lot of eyes and hands yep. and kind of corral. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go with you. That'd be great. But, you know. And then the list of dates, of course, I have a repeat from last year, March 18th and 19th. That's obviously not going to happen two days in a row. March 18th is our new kindergarten day. So our preschoolers um, is split into two groups, and we have parent meetings, and they see each of the three teachers that day. Family fun night. Looking forward to that. Big old bingo night. <laughs> they have gift cards from uh, local businesses. Well, yeah, our PTO our is small, but they're very valuable. They work very hard for us. And then in April, we're moving into I'm assessments. Yeah. Again, PTO party ball on the 8th. That hasn't happened. Again, second graders have never had party ball. 
so no one knows what Carnival is about because they talk to the little ones about it. It's just weird. You know, it is. It's weird because what we do every year, we haven't done for two years. Is Mel still going to pass it off? Yeah. She yeah. Well, she's trying to pass it off. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like she does such a good job. She I know. I know. She's, she's got a dad. I know. She and PTO is very willing to take it, but they turned her and asked her all the time. So, you know, I mean, it's just easier. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. She's done it for so long. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's boomerang back. So, any questions for me? <laughs> is that the big gym or the interaction? Oh, it's the big gym. And that is another switch because we've always had a small, that small, where we had the concessions and everything. Well, now we're trying to figure out how to crowd everybody in the big, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, just trying to decide. Because part of the uniqueness of Carnival is the craziness. Yeah. And everybody on top of each other. Yeah. So yeah. if we spread it out and put like the fingernails and the tattoos and the uh, fortune telling out there, then what does that do? You know, it's just, we're fine. That'd be fine. Different uh, April 8th. Yeah. It's a sight to behold. Oh, yes. <laughs> Nothing like carnival. Just, very, just very to let you know, that I am the reigning carnival king. The after the year that I was crowned, they no more did it. So oh, I'm still. You're still so so I sound suspiciously like a booth. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
there's noise level in a bathroom that you're like, there shouldn't be. And click, you can go to the camera and look outside and see who it is and what happened. So I don't know if you watched the news last night, but there was a story about a student in Texas who was like, drunk in the bathroom and food and kicked and all that kind of stuff. So at least we would be alert if those things were going on. Um, the vaping, that's way more uh, kids that I caught since we were So I just want you to know where we'll be. Um, and, and when a student gets caught vaping, um, they have a choice. Um, there's a, a, a suspension, um, but they can, can give them a citation for uh, tobacco products of their age. Um, or if you give them a chance to take a class through New Horizons where they take a, it's a five hour class and um, they take it and it's to work with kids on realizing the dangers of vaping and basically try to target those behaviors as to you know, why they're picking up a vape. Um, not to scare you all, but I've been asking our students quite frequently at how they can give you a percentage of um, how many kids they in high school and the percentage is extremely high. I hear 75 to 80 percent repeatedly from kids. Um, and I had, like today, I had somebody email me that they witnessed some kids vaping um, in the bathroom. They were girls and they were girls that you would not suspect. So I couldn't, um, I could check bags, but I also didn't want to, um, that was the only other person in the bathroom witnessing it, I didn't want to witness the bad spot, so it's just more like, okay, I got eyes on it, so um, never forget that, too. Um, math book study team, we met today for the last time. Uh, we had, uh, we started off with the math team, I'll just tell you, uh, off record, that when I first brought up the idea of the book study, they were like, why are we having any trouble? You know, they kind of did that way. <laughs> today, this morning, we really celebrated, and they were all like, this was awesome being able to talk. Um, we invited um, uh, Robert Eisenstein, a sixth grade math teacher, he joined us. So um, every couple of weeks we would meet and talk about math and we read this book together. And trying to make math not as scary. Um, you know, people are saying, oh, I don't do math, I can't do math. And so we wanted to go back and start early about um, helping these great kids and having them realize that they have a huge they are mathematicians. From these conversations, we are adding more math electives next year. So I'm excited to do that as well. Um, yeah, it was good. Like um, Mr. Patterson's registered students. Um, he may have to go back and edit some of that because our master schedule team isn't done. I'm working on the schedule about what we've come up with so far. We, we have a plan where we don't have to use junior or high school teachers for junior high classes until the end of the day. And I think that's going to open up blocks A3 to B7, the ones where we have, we've had 66 kids in the library taking NCC classes because there weren't enough classes um, to choose from. So we think we fixed that problem, but we're not quite done with the scheduling, but hoping that it will, it will look good next year. Um, working with local farmers to purchase animals for our 4-H kids. Um, FFA, FFA, yeah, sorry. Um, so hopefully uh, I've talked to somebody about pigs, talked to somebody about goats, and talked to somebody about sheep, so hopefully we'll get those purchased. And ready to go. As soon as the weather's nice, we need to get out there and clean. Um, we're taking bids for the, uh, uh, the work that needs to be done out there on the water lines. Um, Andy Crawford has been handling that and getting information to us. Um, and we're selling grain from beans and grain. Um, and then next week, a group of elementary and secondary staff will be attending um, a curriculum conference in Chicago. It's actually an international conference. And um, we're grateful for that opportunity to go and learn what's new in education. So I'm excited. I'm really looking forward to that. So far, um, so far, I just can't tell you, I've had the best professional development in the world I've ever had in my career, so thank you. Well, I'm going to let these two guys go if you're okay with this conference. This Ms. O'Donnell has been at the table downstairs for the teachers talk about egg and whatnot. She's been a lot of egg. <laughs>
So kudos to you on that too. So. I'm having trouble getting into my grade book today, so I it's I don't know, I can't I can't open it. So it's telling me I'm kind of like so, uh, anyway you talk to the parents about that. So transfer there in the basketball junior high programming, the coach program for Coach Putnam. And you can see the job description uh, with the technology director. First four policies that set last line. Yeah. And the last policy. Yep. That's it. That I have. I'm sure that would be a question if the board has one. Letter A. Letter B is our insurance rates, the suggested ones. We're in the Iowa Stars Consortium. Um, I don't say this flippantly by any means. If we were not to be happy with these, our vote would have to be to leave the consortium. Mm -hmm. you know, we can't say, well, we, uh, you know, we think that the dental addition ought to be, instead of 4250, 5250. We can't do that. That's a determined number by the group. The board does have the authority, though, is to stay in the group if there's a year where things are, you don't feel, mm -hmm. where they should be. Um, but none of it is no, like out of, you know. Dennis Grable is phenomenal. And I know some, you don't have, you haven't worked with him, but boy, Joy knows this because she's been here longer than I have been as a part of this. But, and you too, Linda. Yeah. And I don't know if you remember, but there was a year I went up by like 28%. And we weren't in the consortium. We, it was, we were self-funded as our own group. And 
it was mid-year, and there had to be adjustments made because there was a lot of costs, and it was a disaster. And just trying to work with our teachers, you know, some little more to get. And so then we went to the Iowa Stars group, and that group has grown each year with more schools, which helps because the bigger your pool, you know, the more stable your rates and the better you get. So we've been in this since about a year before I became superintendent, probably 2003. And we're in that range, 2004. So, anyway, just a little background on that. The only thing I would mention, if you look at our self-insurance balances on June 30th, excuse me, not June 30th, but as of 2.22, okay, oh, yeah. where we're at, but when we get to where it says 2022, that will be from June 30th snapshot. You can see the money that we've saved by having our self-insurance um, in place, that if we didn't do that, uh, that would have gone straight to the insurance company. So you see that with medical, dental, and vision. Mm -hmm. If there's a year, and we've been very blessed, that the group has, let's say, an 8% increase, we could buy it down to maybe 5% and utilize some of that money mm -hmm. for that purpose. But because we've been very blessed to have low increases, that's why you know that, that number is building. But it's inevitable with medical rates that some year that's going to happen. That's where we'll use that money. So if you're a board member saying, well, why is that money growing? What are we going to do with it? That's what we would do with it, if in fact we're presented with that. Same thing with dental, same thing with vision. On that, but you can see we're recommending locally that um, we increase the payment for routine vision, vision exams from 125 to 150 as far as um, what we would, you know, if the vision exam is $200, we, we pay the first 150 And that comes out of that dental account of 131620 So, no. that, it does not. Oh, excuse me, I had vision. You said vision and then I meant vision, but I was on the wrong column. That's 71882 yes. speaking of vision. <laughs>
And then letter, letter E is just a Spanish trip that uh, was presented earlier. Mr. President, Senator Number three. Most of the therapies in the kit the same. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. All right. Individual. Yes, letter A. It's an extension of our agreement with the city, the old school site, as we discussed at our joint meeting. Uh, I was visiting with Joy, and I said, and I gave Joy credit, she put this together, and I looked it over with her when she was done, and I said, hey, we've got to have something in writing. We came to an agreement that we would extend it um, with the key in there. It's the very first, well, it's right in the middle where it says the original warranty deed, which is attached. Here, too, this extension will be revisited on an annual basis, and the school would have to give the blessing of anything other than a new recreation center so we can start on this property. So it allows it to be continued, but it just basically puts into place what we discussed that night. And it's important we have a trail of that when we get to that point. So I'm asking for your approval tonight, Linda, to sign it before you leave, and then we'll take it to the city for their approval, and we'll attach it to there and move forward. All right. Uh, fiscal year 21 district audit. Angela and Joy, is there anything you want to point out? Um, I will say the audit came back positive. And as a compliment to everyone that works in the central office, as far as our systems and organ, you know, organization and management. The challenge we have as a small district, just like every small district, is just trying to get the segregation duties. You know, in a perfect world, one person collects the money, another person puts it in the safe, another person takes it out, and the other person takes it to the bank. You know, they try to have things segregated. And Is it the same thing with every year, Joy? Yeah, that's usually what we get big on. What and then on? publishing all the bills like that. Right. So. There's no conflict of interest for me, though. Nope. Yeah, I thought Took that off. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Which <laughs> never really learned. No. But I mean, that's, you, they had to point that out, and yeah. that's fine. Same thing with the approval of the tax exemption certificate, the form. Yes. All right. Motion passes. All right. 
already. I know. We're good. Uh, number eight is our hirings. You can see we're ahead of the game for next year. Jacob Kaufman is the recommended pitching and wrestling coach. And Mrs. Austin mentioned about Christine Fox starting mm -hmm. as one of our pairs. Uh, maintenance wise, Andy's giving some bids on uh, you know some of the projects our maintenance committee met um, two weeks ago tomorrow already. And I thought we had a really good meeting and put a list together. And Angela remind me things slow down a little bit. I've got that list and we can put that in as far as things that we're budgeting for next year on our capital project sheet or our uh, save. I got that sitting in the file. Okay, great. So We'll keep you posted as we move forward with that. Full board, uh, what's not broke this month? Well, we, well, no, no, no. hot tub, no, we decided to put it on hold because we don't have the money to fix it. We have to get a new boiler. We have to get the two new little ones, yes. Yes, I had to call staff tonight because it wasn't clarified in the minutes whether that was supposed to happen this fiscal year or next. Thank you. I, she told us that it was for next fiscal year. Okay, now she told me tonight that we have to have it done now. Well, okay, I take that back. My understanding is what we have to get it done now. Now, but you were going to borrow from, and I, did, did, remember I said, Tim, Just I went, it. wow, <laughs> but I'm not going to question what she tells me. Okay. So we've changed the budget. We've changed it a couple different times. I know we have. I changed it again today. So I will talk to her again. Please. No, we have. Yeah, we have to get it done because first of all, they've had issues. You know. Right. TMI has been there like twice a week. It wouldn't go until July first. No. Yeah. And it may take a month to get it. She doesn't know how long it would come to come in, and she's worried about having swim lessons for the school. The kids. So we no, we have to have it now. So I don't know. Okay, so it needs to be in this fiscal year. Yes, it does. Okay. All right. What I will do. Yes, thank okay. you. So yes, we have to get that done because it's okay. we don't want it to because it, okay. she was afraid like a couple weeks ago that she yeah, yeah. And, 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 because and we just questioned it because it yeah. didn't state in the minutes. Um, it was very generic. Okay, Sarn. It was very generic. Okay. That's why. That's why we questioned okay. it. Yeah, so he will need to fix that. Just to that no. How would you, how would you, like, it's always not. I just need to school year. All right, legislatively. All right, anyway, so that's what we're Legislatively, I went to the legislative session last Saturday, uh, on Saturday morning in uh, City Hall Chambers. I missed that. I'm not a chamber for my business. Well, well if you would ever visit with Jenny once in a while, <laughs> you sure that too. She's always so quiet. She's like, I'm not turning into this. Stop. Linda, are you not still part of the Facebook page? It was posted on the Facebook page many, many times in the chamber. I'm going to have to look. I'm going to have to check that out. It's on, it's on I, thought, I thought it was, but... I had a really good discussion anyway, from an educational side about the vouchers, you know, those trying to be pushed through. Mm -hmm. And um, clearly from a public edu educational side, it's not good for public education. And uh, there's several reasons why. Number one, they don't follow the same rules. Mm -hmm. Number two, when private, it, when public dollars go toward a private entity, that's, that's not the way the system is set up. Okay. Number three, if people want choices right now, it's called open enrollment. Mm -hmm. Number four, they don't have to take anyone. Because that was one thing that was brought up. Well, people should have a choice. I said, well, do you realize that if two of you here want to send your children to Davenport Assumption, for example, they could take one of you, they could take both of you, they could deny both of you. Mm -hmm. So you say it's a choice, but if they can turn you down, is that really a choice? No. You know, and if they're not willing to take kids that are special ed, you know, it's, they don't follow the same rules. So public, public dollars should not go to something that doesn't follow public rules. Yeah, they don't have a board, do they? They're elected. I mean, they may have a board, but it's not elected and it's not. 
it's complete. I hear you. So anyway, I had a very good discussion with that. Uh, oh. Fortunately for us, Bobby Coughlin is very staunch um, against the vouchers. So some of the other ones that weren't, you know, weren't offered unless it came in the David Harbor. Um, one of the other new Republicans. So I was a little disappointed in that, but had a good conversation. Good. Just thought I'd share that. I'll tell you what's getting a lot of interest, and this is all I have, is the thousand dollar stipend that uh, the teachers are being awarded from uh, the state. It's interesting in some of the parameters of that, but I'll give you an example. We have we have a teacher here that teaches 90% of the time in the classroom who's also our athletic director and doesn't teach her in the skinnies, which is just the other day when we built that in, so they need to set up for games and that kind of stuff. Doesn't qualify for the second. You have to be a hundred percent teacher in order to get that. It's like our school nurse doesn't get that. I mean, if anybody's been through the pandemic up in the front, right. no. school nurses, your parents, right. yeah. you know, cooks, I'll go to bed for my administrator. You know, I mean, there's been a lot of people that, and one of the teachers said to me, who does get it, said, you know, the biggest frustration is everybody was considered a critical worker in education, but then you pick one of the critical workers and the other two awards. So, matter of fact, and I, I talked to Bobby Coffin today, and he's, um, was working on legislation to give anyone that was employed in education the same thing. Because what's tough is I even got some emails from people to qualify saying, well, isn't the district going to oh. give us the $1,000 that the other people have? We, this isn't our deal. It was the states. Please contact them. I, mean, right. I feel bad. I, I wonder if get, that's not out of our funding source. So I just want to mention that to you in case someone say they do. Uh, two weeks from tonight, if we can have a real quick meeting, even if you join via Zoom, I can send out a link. Angela needs to present our budget. Oh, that's And nice. then we will send the budget set to budget hearing for that April meeting, but she needs to go through with you. That's just how it works. Typically, we do it in a work session, but we don't have a work session. This is a break. And then the last Wednesday, we have IVB or IVPS now in here at 5 o'clock. But is that okay to have a special meeting? It'll take no more than 20 to 30 minutes tops. It's just she'll go through it, answer any questions, we'll set the time, place, blah, blah, blah. If any of you want me to make this Zoom for you, just email me and I'll send you a Google link. Or I'll you know, put it on the calendar and invite you. I just have to have a form. Does that work? I mean, is that okay? You see the other dates on there, hopefully, that work? You got to go. All right, that's all I got. Thank you, thank you. Yes, and I will not be here next month.